Oh, how we love our queen palms. They're so gorgeous. And they're so well behaved. Not a single thorn on the tree. More or less self-cleaning if you're willing to put up with a little bit of dead stuff on the bottom. And if you're not, not too hard to trim them up. Here's a perfectly trimmed tree. You can see the cuts are nice and square. The bases have been pulled off, revealing the gorgeous, hard, smooth trunk underneath. Every one of these rings was a palm frond holding onto the trunk, as you see there, all the way around. And it leaves its permanent impression on the tree, showing the world its mark on the planet, even when it's gone. Uh, but sometimes, this is a wonderful property here, sometimes these trees can have some issues. Look at that beautiful glistening foliage against the sun. Uh, sometimes these trees can have some issues and we've discovered one here, which is rather severe. And uh, <laughs> uh, I used to trim these trees and I chickened out because I just, I didn't want to send my employees up there anymore. And, and I'm 52 years old and uh, you know, I was hitting DH for a while. Then I retired from designated hitter. And now I'm just, you know, a <laughs> designated consultant. Anyway, uh, but what we have here is something I didn't notice years ago when we were trimming these trees. Is that this tree has some severe rot on this side of it. And uh, my client wanted me to come out and take a look. He had someone else trim these trees. And I thought, usually when you see this, you just have some hard material, just a little bit of surface rot, no big deal. The skin's coming off and it's nice and hard underneath as it is right here. However, on this tree, it was uh, far worse. The worst I've ever seen for a tree that's still standing. And uh, this, is, this is another reason why you don't want to ever climb your trees with spikes. Every time you spike a tree, you create an entry wound in the trunk of the tree from which funguses will slowly get in there and start rotting the tree out from the inside. And uh, in this case, it's hard to say the initial damage that caused the entry of this uh, rotting fungus that's causing this decline. Uh, but in any event, uh, something got in it and it kept going, probably undetected for a lot of years. And then uh, now it's pretty obvious. So the, uh, the crazy thing about this one is that you can actually, watch, I can move the tree. Look at this. See that? You can see it higher up. Look at that. And this tells me this tree's about to fall over. So this is a pretty scary situation. See it moving down here? My client really doesn't like me doing this. <laughs> it makes him nervous. <laughs> but we're gonna get this tree out of here. But sadly, the tree's in perfect shape. It's gorgeous. And it just, it's a testament to how very little material you need on the healthy side of the tree. There's only about a third of this tree that's still attached to the trunk. The rest of it is all rotted away and not conducting any nutrients or water. But it shows that that's all the tree really needs to remain in a perfectly healthy state. And it sort of uh, demonstrates the, the, uh, the profound... Uh, uh, survivability of these trees and their evolution over time. They evolved in Hurricane Alley where hurricanes move through and these trees have unbelievable redundant strength in them, obviously to uh, a, a certain breaking point, but this tree only needs like a third of its trunk to function to make for seemingly a beautiful, perfect looking tree that can stand up in big winds. But there would be a wind that could come through here and knock this thing down. In this area here, we have so many big trees around that these trees are very, really harbored from big winds. The big winds are going over these trees. All these trees are a windbreak. So that's probably why this tree is still standing. It hasn't been subjected to huge winds. If it were on top of a ridge top with big, big gusts, then it probably would have already fallen over. But I wanted to make this video just to kind of show you guys uh, this phenomenon. The other thing that happens with these trees, see this tree over here, it has the same issue, we found out. 
and it's also on the north side of the tree. Sometimes when sprinklers hit these trees, this, the water from the sprinklers can get into little cracks and crevices and start to slowly rot out the inside because it keeps it wet constantly and the fungus really thrives in wet conditions. Now, uh, and that's on the north side, so that's the side that does not dry out. It's also fairly shaded, even in summertime, these trees don't get a lot of sunlight because these trees on the south side are really shading it. So it uh, creates more of a constantly moist situation, which is uh, conducive to the fungus and the rot. Uh, and you can see on this tree, same location on the north side of the tree, we have something similar happening. But in this case, this is not a problem. Even though down here, it looks pretty bad, pretty bad. Uh, it's still not a big issue because you still have uh, the majority of the tree it's probably only maybe like a fifth of the tree is compromised here at this point. Someday this tree will have to be removed, but that day is not now. And uh, the other thing that's going on with these trees, when these trees get older, a lot of these palms will actually push off their bottom bark and they'll make surface roots. And these surface roots, if you cover them with soil, will turn into real roots and anchor the tree. And every one of these things that anchors, it's like a big strong piece of rebar with tensile strength that really helps to hold the tree up and it helps it to thrive. Every root you get going, the more uh, nutrients and water the tree can bring up. So I suggested in this case here, we're gonna raise the soil level to here, in this whole vicinity, and then these roots are going to sprout out aggressively and anchor uh, this tree better. This tree is actually slightly leaning toward the house, which makes us a little nervous, but uh, as you can see, I will push on this tree as hard as I can, and I can't, I can move it just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. Or the other tree, I literally could probably push the whole thing over. Here's the tree. This has a tiny little bit of flaking off here, same, same side of the tree. Uh, and this tree here, I can just slightly move it a little bit less than, than the second tree. First tree moves a ton, second tree moves a little, and then the third tree barely moves at all. So that's kind of the story of these queen palms. And uh, the great thing is they're, they're pretty affordable, they're fast growing. And so if you do need to take a tree out, you can always plant one up and it grows like a foot a year and it won't be very long before you have yourself a beautiful replacement. End of video.